Yes. Secretary of State John Kerry continued to defend the nuclear deal with Iran today in a speech to the Council on Foreign Relations, urging Congress not to reject it. But will the deal really prevent Iran from making a nuclear bomb? Dr. Zudi Jasser, president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy and author of A Battle for the Soul of Islam, joins me now. Zudi, it is great to have you here. You know, Thank I've you. been listening Thank to you. this battle royale between the president and Congress over this deal with Iran and, and John Kerry this week uh, to a Senate Foreign Relations Committee saying there's no fantasy alternative. Look, Congress, if you think you're going to come up with something else, there's no way. Is there another option with Iran other than the president's deal? Well, Jerry, I mean, it's just amazing. It's almost you listen to them and it sounds as if the secretary takes us for fools. Iran is not just about nuclear. There's a much bigger picture here, which is we have given away the farm. We've handed back $150 billion. We, and not to mention the nuclear ability to inspect needs three weeks notice. It needs, yes, maybe their breakout time went from a few months to longer right now. But what have we given away? We no longer have leverage. We are allowing them to continue to be the world's greatest sponsor of terrorism. Assad's use of chemical weapons and genocide against the Sunnis, by the way, now is given a green light. Secretary Kerry today was telegraphing to the world that we're going to be meeting with Russia and even Iran as allies against ISIS. I mean, the Syrian American, that's horrific. That it, what's, We're one step ethically away from working with Assad, who uses chemical weapons in order to get rid of ISIS. I mean, the world is upside down now because we're looking through the myopic lens of the nuclear deal when in fact we've allowed Iran to be the hegemonic power in the Middle East with blind with blinders on. Well, Zudi, though, the president says, and I want you to, to explain your view on this, he says you make deals with people you don't get along with. You don't have to make deals with people you already get along with. What's wrong with that statement? Well, it would make sense if we actually got them to make a deal that was in our benefit and at least had some compromise involved, but we gave away everything. We didn't get our prisoners back. We allowed them to get billions back. Their ideology hasn't changed. They still want to destroy Israel and destroy us. And all we're doing is basically saying that, well, we are going to monitor their nuclear program better, which was a failed monitoring program, which they're not going to allow inspections anytime, anywhere. So I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to be convinced that we got from this other right. than Kerry's word that somehow we're going to have a longer breakout time, which has yet to be proved. And, of course, the ICBMs, the ballistic missiles, that continues. That's another thing that's not covered either. I, I want to know what you make of the president going to the U.N. Security Council ahead of Congress. Congress isn't going to be able to make a decision until September. And here the president goes and solicits, you know, the opinion of uh, the U.N. Security Council first. Well, you know, it's it's an insult in that I think he's doing an end around, basically trying to say that he's got the world behind him on this and using more coercion, if you will, to tell Congress to pass it. Or he's basically saying he's going to veto it uh, uh, if they uh, put in uh, legislation to uh, counter the treaty. Now, he, he doesn't even he cannot call it a treaty and thus not even need congressional approval. So, you know, I'm afraid that this is way down the track and it's going to happen. The problem is, is that he just has a solution that's going to get him to the end of his term, and the rest of us and our children are going to be left with a hegemonic power of Iran, which has, as you say, ballistic missiles, more billions. The leverage we had now for decades is gone. So if they violate it next week, next year, what do we do? We have to start sanctions over, and we won't have pressure for another five to ten years. Zudi, so well put. Thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. Zudi Jasser, president of the American Thank Islamic you. Forum for Democracy. Thank you. Thanks.